two educated English women with impeccable reputations witnessed an unusual spectacle. People dressed in old garb, speaking in French, were interacting with each other as if the women were not even there. It seemed as if they had mysteriously stepped into a different moment in time. The two women went on to write an anonymous book about their experience, which was distributed all over Europe, some believing the story and some wildly discrediting it. Did the two women actually come face to face with the ghosts of the French Revolution, or was it all a 20th century hoax? Moberly and Jourdain. Charlotte Ann Moberly was born in 1846 in a family of 15 children. Her father, George, was the headmaster of Winchester College, so she grew up in a world of books, teaching, and professionalism. When Moberly was 40 years old in 1886, she became the first principal of a woman's residence hall at St. Hugh's College in Oxford. She quickly realized that the workload was heavier than she thought, and it became clear that she needed to hire an assistant. Miss Eleanor Jourdain, born in 1863, was hired by Moberly at the turn of the 20th century. Jourdain was the oldest of ten children and came from a professional and religious background. Her father was a vicar, her sister an art historian, and her brother a mathematician. Unlike most other women her age, Jourdain had gone to boarding school in Manchester, so she knew the institution's ins and outs. By the time Moberly hired her, she had already published several textbooks and had run a school. To get acquainted, Moberly thought it would be a good idea to travel to Paris together. Since Jourdain already owned an apartment there, she agreed. The Incident On August 10th, 1901, Moberly and Jourdain toured the Palace of Versailles together. Not amused by the tour guide and the crowds, they decided to walk by themselves and quickly got lost in the extensive gardens at Trianon Palace. Unless one has traveled to Versailles before, it's impossible to know how easy it is to get lost in its five-mile-long gardens. Its avenues and trails are long, intersectional, and confusing, and they all lead to different areas of the palace. They are eerily quiet, and a strange sense of mystery plagues the area. After taking a wrong turn when trying to reach Versailles' main avenue, the women decided to look for the Petit Trianon. This small chateau, built in the 1760s during the reign of King Louis XV, the last king of France, was constructed specifically for his wife, Queen Marie Antoinette. When Moberly and Jourdain found themselves walking along a smaller track near the Petit Trianon, Moberly spotted a woman, dressed as if from the 1700s, shaking a white cloth out of one of its windows. At the same time, Jourdain noticed a small, deserted farmhouse with an old-school plow and wheelbarrow near its entrance. It was at this moment both women claimed to suddenly feel overwhelmed by a sense of, quote, oppression and dreariness. As they continued walking, they encountered a set of young men who looked like palace gardeners. Moberly noted the polished, dignified look of the men who wore long gray morning coats and small hats, again in a fashion from the 1700s. Meanwhile, Jourdain walked by a cottage with a woman and a young girl standing by the door. The woman was holding a water jug to the girl who was reaching for it. Jourdain described the experience as a tableau vivant. This living picture recreation was popular at the turn of the century. Although Moberly didn't witness this exchange, she described a noticeable shift in the atmosphere. Quote, Everything suddenly looked unnatural, therefore unpleasant. Even the trees seemed to become flat and lifeless as wood worked in tapestry. There were no effects of light and shade, and no wind stirred the trees. When they reached a spot close to Marie Antoinette's Temple of Love, a large garden near the Trianon area of Versailles, they came across a man, also in period garb, wearing a cloak and a shade hat. This man gave the women an eerie feeling. According to Miss Moberly, his appearance was, quote, most repulsive, its expression odious. His complexion was dark and rough. Meanwhile, Jourdain stated that, quote, the man slowly turned his face, which was marked by smallpox. His complexion was very dark. His expression was evil and yet unseeing. And though I did not feel that he was looking particularly at us, I felt a repugnance to going past him. Further ahead, they encountered another man, 
also in a hat and cloak, but this time it was a friendly gentleman who directed the women to their desired location. They walked along a bridge and finally made their way to the Petit Trianon. As they were getting near the front gardens, Moberly saw an elegantly dressed lady who appeared to be drawing on a sketch pad. Moberly first assumed that the woman, who had long, fair hair and was also in period costume, was a tourist. Still, when they looked at each other, the Englishwoman became absolutely sure that the lady was Marie Antoinette herself. However, Jourdain did not see her. An Adventure According to the women, neither talked about their experience at first. But after Moberly wrote her sister a letter detailing her afternoon at Versailles, she finally worked up the courage to ask Jourdain if she had also witnessed the strange experience at the Petit Trianon. Jourdain corroborated the apparitions. Soon after, they returned to the gardens, hoping to retrace the path they took on that fleeting occasion. However, the gardens were not what they were on that day. They came across regular tourists wearing 1900s clothing. Back in their Oxford home, the pair compared their notes about the events and decided to each write their accounts of what had happened on that day at Versailles. Perhaps they had stumbled onto a party by accident. Still, after checking official records, they realized no event had taken place that afternoon. The two English women began researching portraits, official records, and books to find out if they recognized someone from their experience. Through their investigation, they recognized that the man they saw by the kiosk was the Comte de Vaudreuil, one of Marie Antoinette's best friends. After conducting research, they concluded that the events they witnessed had taken place in August 1792, a mere month and a half before the abolition of the French monarchy, when the Tuileries Palace in Paris was attacked and the King's guards fell. They were then convinced that they had either traveled through time or had seen ghosts. The women published a book about their experience, called An Adventure, in 1911, but worried about the potential controversy. They chose the pseudonyms of Elizabeth Morrison and Francis Lamont to cover their true identities. The book included several maps detailing Versailles, a lengthy description of their supernatural encounter, as well as their reactions and subsequent investigation. Owing to the detailed account of the encounter with Marie Antoinette, the book became a sensation in Europe. Critiques Although the general public, and some notable characters, such as J.R.R. Tolkien himself, believed the account to be authentic, plenty of critics did not take it seriously. To them, it was simply not possible, as it was filled with inconsistencies. In 1903, an old but original map of the gardens showed that the English women's bridge mentioned several times in their story did not exist. Writer Philippe Julian proposed a non-supernatural explanation of the adventure in his 1965 biography of French poet Robert de Montesquieu. He explained that, around the same time as Moberly and Jourdain's excursion to Versailles, Montesquieu threw extravagant and lavish parties. He and his friends dressed in period costume. Could this be what the two women saw? Did they gatecrash a costume party and misunderstand it to be a haunting? Many believe this to be the real explanation. The two ladies mostly kept to themselves and did not attend many social gatherings. They simply could have been startled by the lavish party. In 1991, scholar Terry Castle proposed a theory that the Moberly Jourdain incident was a collective delusion that may have arisen out of a lesbian folie à deux between the two English women. Also known as a shared psychosis, a folie à deux is a psychiatric condition where delusional beliefs and even hallucinations are transmitted from one individual to another. Another scholar by the name of Michael Coleman took the Montesquieu party theory further. He also noted that the book had been republished several times over the next decade. With each edition, the story became increasingly grandiose. Coleman also questioned the thoroughness and factuality of the ladies' research after the initial events. He pointed out that most of their literary and historical sources were quite unreliable. Perhaps Moberly and Jourdain, desiring attention, mistook an eccentric party for a supernatural experience. Historian Roy Strong noted that although the Moberly Jourdain story has been largely debunked, it had, quote, retained its hold on the public imagination for half a century. People loved the story, whether they believed it to be true or not. 
The mystery continues. Both Charlotte Moberly and Eleanor Jourdain had several paranormal experiences after their wild adventure in the Versailles Gardens. However, Moberly seems to have experienced more paranormal events than Jourdain. Years after the French incident, she claimed to have seen Roman Emperor Constantine's ghost in the Louvre Museum. Jourdain, who later succeeded Moberly as head principal of St. Hugh's College, remained haunted and traumatized by the events of 1901. Her behavior grew increasingly erratic as the years went by, leading to a tutor's unjust firing. After being asked to resign from her position at St. Hugh's, she perished in 1924 under mysterious circumstances. Do you want a deeper look at the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond? Subscribe now, leave a comment if there are any mysteries that you want us to explore in upcoming videos.